Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, we're talking about our Flappy Birds addiction and why they, we had one in the first place and distracting ourselves with uh, Chilla's doodads and some wonderful ASCII art as we're joined by the fellows from AudioShocker.com. Awesome Cast. It's the awesome cast. We're talking tech here in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg, ready to go here uh, at Sorgatron. With me on the couch, the terrible twosome is back. Katie and John. In your glass. In my glass. <laughs> this is, what are you doing? How did this you start? start? I don't even know how it started. <laughs> I can't remember how it started. Some, now, every time Sorg finishes a sentence, you have to tweet what Sorg says and finish it with hashtag, hashtag on his glass or in, in his, his glass. glass. Oh, this is going to be that. horrible. <laughs> this is going to be horrible. It's an interactive you know what it is? Oh. That's how it started. We were talking about flappy birds, <laughs> and you said, I have it on my glass. I kind of had and it I on my glass. And I just ran with I it. I kind of had it on my glass. We'll get to that. We'll unfortunately talk about the flappy birds uh, situation uh, uh, here, uh, I think it's the but, entire podcast already. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, but it, this is the awesome cast. I'll get to our guests here in a second. Uh, we're of course here recorded live every Tuesday at six thirty p.m. Eastern on Live. Media dot com. Twitter at Awesome Cast. Uh, hey, awesomecast dot com. I finally fixed it, Chilla. We have a site again. Yes. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, kind of. Got a little bit of stuff going on, but you can go check it out now. Uh, we can also uh, you can also find us on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Stitcher, and Spreaker. There's some of you guys listening to us on there as well, um, and of course uh, on Twitter at AwesomeCast, uh, on Facebook, Google Plus. You can comment on any anything we're uh, talking about. Let us know any stories that uh, you catch through the week. You think we should be talking about, uh, so we can uh, get them in the rundown here for Tuesday night. Uh, so with that, hey, we got some guests. Uh, this is again we kind of started a podcast month. Uh, Last week with uh, uh, John DeGore from um, Creative Briefs. Go, make sure to follow them. It's a great creative podcast. Uh, these guys I was actually introduced to. I've heard the name around Pittsburgh for a few years, seen the flyers and everything, but uh, was able to uh, sit in on a fantastic uh, session they did at PodCamp Pittsburgh 7, I think in 2012. Uh, Nick and Neil from Audio Shocker. How you doing, guys? Hey, what's up? Hi, great to be here, Ron. <laughs> Um, so tell me. Oh, baby! Oh no, they got a soundboard. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! You got. Yeah, I tell I, every week they ask me to get a soundboard, and I say no. We will never do a soundboard on this show. <laughs> um, it's like basically the oh, topic we have podcasting. <laughs> uh, so tell us about what what is Audio Shocker? What are you guys doing over there? Uh, Nick, I'm gonna let you do this one. <laughs> the Audio Shocker is a pop culture podcast network featuring uncensored pop culture criticism and comics creation conversation. We have about mm, three to four new episodes a week, and uh, it's all audio podcasting. This video stuff, it's a little new for me. It's a little scary. It's a little sexy, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but uh, that's about it. Awesome, awesome. And you guys, I know uh, I've, I've kind of made it a point recently to dip into uh, what you guys are doing over there. Uh, and I have that, you guys, together, you actually do the podcast Verite, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. So uh, podcast Verite is kind of like one of our newer series that we put together, or newer podcasts we put together. And it kind of came out of the old sort of Audio Shocker podcast we did. And we realized that um, what works best for Nick and I is to do sort of three topics every week one that nick brings in one that i'll bring in and one that we sort of crowdsource from the audience and so it gives us a really good mix and sort of keeps it fresh every week um mainly so that nick doesn't just talk about how much he loves war machine and i don't talk about how much i love susan sarandon <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's awesome, awesome. How what it comes down to how long have you been doing the podcast uh, since September of 2007 is when we did our first audio shocker podcast nice so, is it six and a half years i think uh, if math serves. And now you guys, I, I noticed that like, you guys are very pop culture, but you also, you do have a few, uh, I think including maybe you guys too, uh, that are actually, you know, creating some stuff online. It looks like webcomics and stuff too, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm not, um, yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I, 
you know, I'm a cartoonist and a lot of my friends are cartoonists. And in the past, we've run some web comics and stuff like that. Although right now we're pretty much just strictly podcasts at the moment. But that could change if the right opportunity comes along. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. If anybody wanted to dip in, because, again, you guys got a lot of stuff over there. Uh, if anybody wanted to dip in first, like like especially people maybe listening to this show that are more kind of tech, social media, uh, you know, kind of online minded. Uh, uh, what, what do you think is, is what show should they, they, they start with, you think? Oh, definitely podcast verite. I think that's our most, um, I don't know, open show for people who aren't necessarily interested in more niche things like cult film or video games or comics, for example. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, all right. Uh, so uh, we're going to uh, get into our awesome things of the week. I can't wait to see what you guys have lined up here. So, uh, was with, that us? Are yeah. We, oh, sorry. We we'll look for a response. That's fine. <laughs> I need. I need the names. This is. You know. I'm like. I don't know who the you is. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> Neil. Nick. Can you like point at the screen so we know who you're talking to? Oh yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> the soul. So you over there, and then you over there. Um, no, we'll, we'll, it's all right. Um, so let's go. Uh, go with the comfortable. Uh, Katie Dutters, what do you have for this week? Yeah, hi guys. I have I have your favorite uh, Flappy Bird. Flappy, <laughs> really? Flappy Birds is your pick? Oh, it's my pick. It's everyone's pick. Re- I don't understand the love of Flappy Birds. <laughs> I didn't say I'd love for Flappy Bird. I just had something for you about like Flappy Bird. Um, there is a new app out to um, satisfy your flappy bird needs. <coughs> it is called Amazing Cupid. And what this is, is that it is a combination of Snapchat and Flappy Bird. It's made to, it's kind of a friendly knockoff of Flappy Bird, so it's not quite the same thing. It's, it's They call it a, like, a friendly tribute. Uh, the articles are amazing. The titles alone, if Flappy Bird and Snapchat spawned a demon love child, it would be amazing Cupid. That's from TechCrunch. Uh, the other one was like, a, they called it a Frankenstein. Essentially what you're doing with it is you're creating a secret message that you're sending to a friend and you're giving them a challenge. It might be to get past a certain number of pillars and uh, to, in order for them to read the message. If you don't do very well, it will tell you that you are doing a horrible job and you will have no friends. But uh, if you do, you get to read your friend. If you do accomplish it, you will get to read your friend's um, uh, message that they sent to you. But so it's kind of it, it's it's on Android now. It's supposed to be on uh, the iPhone by uh, Friday for Valentine's Day. So I mean, the perfect gift for the Flappy Bird enthusiast who is sadly missing their their game. So who would have thought the the, the <laughs> tappy avoiding pipe or the bad tappy avoiding pipe game became became a genre in the last week, right? It, it yeah, is. Wasn't it already a thing beforehand? Like, wasn't it based on like a game with a helicopter or something? I, I know this this game has been around for a few months. Actually, but the, I think that, <clears throat> so. the The guy who built this bases a lot of his things off of old eight bit mm-hmm. yeah. Nintendo and even back as I far mean, as Atari. And I think I don't know who said that. Um, and I'm pointing. I don't know, I don't, I don't know <laughs> where voices. I'm pointing. It was, it was Neil. Neil. I'm pointing uh, at the voices. It was Neil. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think there was like an Atari game that was kind of like this, where you had to something, right? Yeah, you had to to navigate the helicopter. It might have been called yeah. Chopper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Similar to that. But there are a ton of knockoffs, and this one just was particularly stuck out because it was Valentine's Day themed, almost. Where you can send secret messages to your friends. Now, will it continue? Can you continue past Valentine's Day to send messages? Oh, yeah. You can, all your little friends, you can send them a bunch of messages. Oh, the NSA is going to be tracking these. Oh, yeah. We're going we're to have Al Qaeda sending messages through uh, Amazing Cupid. I'm waiting for that one. In well, actually, code. I don't know. Are we worried about Vietnam spying on anybody? Because that's where this guy came mm-hmm. from. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a messed up story. Well, and I think it's been it's been around for months and months and months. Yeah. I don't understand right. why. And, and, and it didn't pick up any traction until really recently. But at the same time, the same thing happened with like Rebecca Black's Friday, right? Like yeah. it came out, no one knew about it for months, and then it got picked up on Tosh Point Oak. It's like a like like a blind kind of like whatever item, and then it just exploded. Like mm-hmm. it was just crazy pants, and um, it's kind of hilarious. Yeah, I know. There's like he, this tweets like like his life is destroyed. He took it down here uh, a, a day yep. ago, mm-hmm. um, and then there's like mixed messages because maybe Nintendo sent him a cease and desist. That's this is, this is for the for the art. Maybe not. We're not sure. Yeah. Um, and, now, I read an article that was I think in the Wall Street Journal this morning that stated that they actually got a hold of him and interviewed him. Yeah. And he said it was 
he felt bad because this was his claim. He felt bad because the point of the game was to be something that you could relax and do in a minute or in a, in a short period of time and then go on with your day. Mm. And he felt like he was ruining people's lives because they were obsessed with sitting there playing in ang- or angry birds, flappy bird nonstop. So mm. that was, that was what he re- released to the media. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, I find it hard to believe that someone's life's ruined because they're making 50 grand a day. Yeah. I don't believe well, that number. Well, this, this is an <laughs> interesting thing. They brought the uh, thing. Mac break was talking about this today. Uh, again, this is Vietnam. And I guess if you make like, Holy crap, I just made a bunch of money. That becomes a big tax problem. Mm. And I think he got like called into the State Department. Well, at that uh, point in time, moved to America. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Get the heck out of there. <laughs> Get the heck out of there, yeah. Dong. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but you know, I, I guess kudos to him for like having the balls to be like, you know what, maybe this isn't helping people. Like, I'm willing to put some financial gain on the back burner and, mm-hmm. you know, maybe invest time in another game or take a break or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's not like his game was so hard that you couldn't clone it. It's like you guys said, there's a thousand clones of it already in, um, in both app stores. But, uh, you know, I can't play more than three rounds of that game without wanting to throw my phone out the window. So I kind of get what he's saying. Maybe it may be he'll, he'll well one it, it's 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 not available in the app store but it's they're still out there and there's ads being served on this this is a free game supported by ads so he's still gonna make money because the people addicted are still gonna play it mm-hmm. so I don't know if there's a I don't know about that back end if there's a way to really turn that off if he's really kind of <laughs> or if he's just like oh, I'll just write it out on this extra cash in my pocket maybe he'll donate it to some of those gamers anonymous ones because uh, I know like Korea is really bad with Starcraft. And, you know stuff like that. That that, re- that region. I don't know what Vietnam's like, but they they're pretty crazy about their game addictions over there. So while uh, that's an interesting question that you'd have to ask Apple or or Android, Google, if you pull your app from the App Store, even though you're running i ads in it, are they is your funding then invalidated? Yeah, I'd be curious about that. So while you're getting ads, so. they may they may no longer be paying him. Because the app is no longer officially licensed under his end user licensing agreement for development. It depends on what goes. I, I imagine that it's been pulled. I can probably still get it from my purchase because I deleted. I deleted out of frustration a few days ago uh, myself. So I'm wondering if you can still download. Because a lot of those, like, you can if still- you use iCloud backup for your apps, you should be able to get it back. If you do not iCloud backup, you will yeah. probably not. Yeah, be able I'm, to get I'm it back. able to get it. God help me, it's downloading right now. Um, <laughs> so, well, this podcast you, is over. What do you think about this fifty thousand dollar a day figure they put on uh, what you call it on the money he's making from the ads? Is that even possible? Right. I think it's definitely possible. I, I think to break into the top ten apps um, on the the current listing, whether it's um, you're the top ten apps from from for the, from the financial paid side. Or you're the top 10 grossing apps. We saw this in Smurfs where people were buying a bunch of stuff and the Smurfs game was free. I think to break into that top 10 list, I want to say at last glance, you had to be grossing a million dollars a day from your game. Mm-hmm. So a million dollars versus 50,000 is a, is a pretty far stretch. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and, and, and I don't... I, I'm not 100% sure. I have a friend that's a developer that, that did some ad-based stuff and he's not making a lot of money, but the ad revenue is based on how long the app is open as well. It's not like you don't have to click on one of the ads to then get paid for it. Still get paid for you seeing get it. paid for people seeing it. Yeah, so, impressions. and you get one of those ads after every round of Flappy Birds, which for me is usually hitting the first pipe and then getting pissed off and going through again until I get to the the third time and I'm like, you know what, forget it. But so for those people that are just sitting there playing for hours and think about how many people that is, even if he made, let's just say a hundredth of a penny per ad. I mean, I'm sure there are there's millions of people out there playing that game that that money is going to quickly add up. Yeah, we don't even know what uh, Android released. Somebody got the, uh, the Android number somehow. Um, but I don't think we even know uh, the Apple version. So plus, there was no Windows Phone version. He was building one. He just never got around to finishing it. I think that the revenue number was probably true at its peak for maybe one or two particular days when everyone was super into it. But I bet it's going to trail up very quickly because 
people get bored of games. I mean, the average number of opens for a normal app is like three. So the fact that you played this game really hot and heavy for a week, that doesn't mean you're going to play it again, you know, for after I, like a month I or still so. bet on the OCD people out there. I really do. <laughs> I, but, but, yeah. Well, hey. well speaking we, of making money. Yes. Uh, you, you know what you could do with your phone? Sell it on eBay. <laughs> oh, yes. That's right. I, I, I have the link for you there. Yeah. Check out how much these phones are going for. They, it's like uh, that, they're, they're, they're starting out at fifteen hundred dollars, fourteen hundred dollars for iPhones or whatnot. Not even not even nice iPhones. Just so they have floppy bird on them. I, I like I almost want to toss it on eBay and see what happens. Like, yeah, you can take it. There. So this just in um, eBay is contacting all people oh. selling their phone on eBay um, and telling them that their ad has been removed. And as per eBay policy, smartphones and tablets must be restored to factory settings before they are allowed to be oh. sold on eBay. Oh. <clears throat> and then yeah, what if it came with Flappy Bird as a factory setting? What if that was your argument? You, they know you, you can't get a phone factory out of the factory with Flappy Birds on it. Now, that would be brilliant. If, Somewhere if, in China, this is going to be happening. It's going to roll out in the next week. You Samsung made a deal like... Hey, can we can we buy the rights to Flappy Birds and we're going to ship every Samsung device with Flappy Birds out of the box? <laughs> that would make the phones useless on eBay. But um, so it says, please remove all content from your device, including the game Flappy Bird. <laughs> before, Especially the game. Before you attempt to list your item again, please be sure that your current and future listings follow these guidelines, keeping in mind that additional violations of the policy could result in suspension of your account. And this has to do with copyright infringement. This one has... Really? Yes. You, okay, that, that makes sense. Because you you log in, you have a right to that game, you, you downloaded it, and, and, and in turn, to give them a phone like that, you're breaking that agreement. Because I'm pretty sure you have a non-transferable mm. license for everything you buy on an Apple store. Yeah, you're selling copyrightable material. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. that makes sense. Yeah, because that's complicated. You have to give somebody your password and all that other stuff too. No, I mean like no, you I, can. Yeah. You they can just. Take well, I mean, you'd have to make a new password. But you'd have to give them the email you're using. You'd have to create a new password for that. No, because if you s ship them your device as is, with oh. your account already logged in and with all your apps, mm -hmm. and then logged out. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised because anytime you see something with scarcity it pops up on ebay with your dick i love that i love like somebody had um like um, ones i'm looking at here starting at like twenty five hundred dollars fifteen hundred um there was one they showed earlier today that was started at thirty three hundred and fifty thousand dollars and there was like a five million dollar uh buy it now oh there it yeah, is that's, that's just ridiculous though there's a five thousand dollar buy it now you really want it? Fifteen thousand. Yeah, man, some people were that for like ten grand yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So, um, please tell me you got some flappy boards. It, well, well, you got one. You got your Cupid game. I got addicted to threes myself. Oh, that's yeah. That's the other one everybody's. I discovered on. that Sunday, which is a dollar ninety nine, and then they don't ask for anything else. It is it is an amazing game. Uh, I definitely recommend. It's actually well, it's, it's on sale now for a dollar ninety nine. I think it still is. So go check that out. So awesome, Sheila. What do you got for your awesome thing? So real quick, sorry to back up. So for every sixteen hundred ads presented, it's like a dollar of revenue. So it That's would it. only be six. So for every sixteen hundred rounds of of Flappy Birds mm -hmm. in existence, he's making a buck. That's great. He's doing it. Okay. He's business. doing. He's doing just fine. He's yeah. college, or he's paying for college, or or whatever point he is at his life. He, he's he's doing just. Fine. I mean, think about it. If 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 one college campus that has what thousand twenty thousand college kids that all play this game, if they played it once per day, I mean, there's twenty grand right there. Mm -hmm. I played it twice today. <laughs> but anyway, so my awesome thing of the week. So, um. I'm addicted to Amazon.com and their like deals of the week or deals of the day. And I use Gizmodo or Lifehacker and they always do their deals. I'm their, so their glad deals. I haven't discovered these yet. <clears throat> so um, I picked up this little device. And, and for those of you that are on audio, it's, it's, 
well, it's weird because it's, it's if I put it right there, it's like hidden behind the mop handle. Um, no, so it's this little it's this little device. It's probably two inches wide, an inch and a half thick, and I don't know five inches tall. Um, but it will actually charge your phone five times in the same USB port that you would charge your phone off of. You can plug in a hard drive or any kind of USB thumb drive or SD card reader, whatever. And there's this little button and you turn it on and then it becomes a Wi-Fi hotspot that oh, will cool. serve out the media on, that's plugged into the USB port. And you can also tell it, hey, log into this Wi-Fi hotspot and rebroadcast the Wi-Fi hotspot. And if you're in an area that doesn't have Wi-Fi, but you have a, a network jack plug, it's there's a LAN port on this side that you can take your wired network and make it Wi-Fi enabled. So it's pretty much like a ha like a mobile utility slash you could really do some cool hacking. We were talking about it at work and what happens if you walked in to some kind of location that didn't have Wi-Fi for security purposes. And, and the device is extremely small. Mm -hmm. And just while someone had their head turned, find an open network jack and plug this in and then walk out, you now have Wi-Fi access from outside the building. Holy crap. <laughs> into their wired network. <laughs> so it's, it's a pretty cool, like, jack-of-all-trades, wireless slash storage serving slash anything you want to do kind of utility. I think it was like originally 90 bucks and then it's marked down to, I think 50. And then I think they marked it down for their deal of the day or deal of the week. It was like 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. So wow. it's definitely worth it mm -hmm. on the iOS and Android side. There's an app that you load, um, that will let you, you the get the media. Access. It'll get the media off of here. Yeah. When you turn it on and join the network the first time, it's almost like your home router where you just go to like 10.20.1.1 mm -hmm. and use the default admin and user and, and password combo to then go in and configure it for the, from the wireless aspect. But it just has so many um, uses that whether you're traveling or you're, even if you're not a traveler, but you go somewhere all the time that only has a wired Ethernet port, or you're you visit someone's house that they have you know your your run of the mill cable mode unplugged directly into their home PC, and you want to share their internet while you're there. It provides all of that in this little handy doodad. <laughs> I mean, it'll recharge most phones. I think they said three to five times depending on the battery life iPads and tablets. Um, I think it was like 0.75 times because the battery differential and storage. Um, but it does have a, a it does charge off a micro USB, so it's it's easy to find any kind of connector to charge it, or you can plug it in and keep it going while it's actually in use. It has a little battery. A, a, you tap on the the front button, and the battery lights light up. They're blue. I don't know if you can see them on the video. Yeah, there you go. Um, which I like blue LED lights, so that was just a, a, another selling point. Um, but the device, I, I just could find about a bazillion uses for it. Even if you're on like a mega bus and you just want to serve stuff to a couple devices in your seat, I think it's completely worth it. Awesome. Only 50 bucks right now. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll include this because one thing we're starting to do uh, with the site, we're going to throw some Amazon links on there. Uh, so you guys can, if you dig some of the stuff we're talking about like this, uh, you can also support the show uh, by using our links just on uh, awesomecast.com. And we're going to stick them right there at the bottom for now at the uh, in the show notes. Uh, so uh, awesome. That's the uh, the Hutu Tripmate. You can look for that up on Amazon. Awesome. Uh, Nick, do you have an awesome thing of the week? Yeah. Uh, there's this network, uh, online network called filmon.tv. Okay. They just announced that they're going to be, that as of today, they're broadcasting local TV stations from their streaming site. And, uh, and obviously this thing's going to be illegal. I don't know how they're going to be able to keep doing this, but I found it really interesting because let's say I'm on the West coast now. So let's say I'm here in long beach. I want to watch agent of shield, which isn't something I want, but let's say I want to watch it. I don't even know the name of it. Agents of shield, something like that. Yeah. Obviously it's not that you couldn't access all these things before, 
right if you went to like a local uh, station streaming site or something like that, or, you know, local, local station streaming link. But now you're going to be able to access all these different major broadcast local stations through this one website. And I'm curious to see how they think this is going to functionally last for them. Yeah, and, 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 and we've had like similar plays like Aereo and everything, kind of rebirth mm-hmm. broadcasting stuff like that. So, yeah. so is there anything in here about like the technology they're using or are they just hijacking <laughs> cable feeds? You know what they said they're doing is they're just – they're doing it through – like, you know, they'll have like a laptop within that, I don't know, wherever that location is or somewhere they can access the content easily. And then they're just, they're kind of like, you know, remote desktop. I mean, that's how they're doing it. Screen scraping sounds tremendously inefficient, which is what most uh, remote desktoping is. I used to have a Rio and it was a good service for what it was at the time. But uh, I, I had to stop paying for it because it just wasn't worth it enough to me. To have that when the next day 90% of what I want's on Hulu or, yeah. or Netflix or Torrents or whatever. It's faster. Huh. I'll have to check that out and keep that keep an eye on that one for sure. Um, yeah, I mean I think that the future I mean I think the future of broadcast television is gonna be that you know you're gonna be able to access different broadcast stations from wherever you want to. Because the fact of the matter is these things are obviously declining. They're not sustainable um, you know business ventures. I don't think in the current like streaming heavy uh, uh, climate that we got right now. So I'm interested to see how this pushes the companies into offering something like this. Now, is this, wait, wait are, are they broadcasting like network networks or are these, like I'm noticing there's like an it's AFL. Both. It's, it's both. It is both. And yeah. it's live? Uh, some of it is. I was watching Corey Feldman's live show today. That was special. Corey Feldman's still alive? <laughs> Yeah, it's Corey Haim that's no longer with us. And there's us. random stuff like there's there's a, a CW New York I'm seeing here. Um, uh, what else we got? We got some UFC Next, uh, Bikini Beach TV. There you go. A couple uh, yeah. of, uh, Let's put that on. A couple this of has pay- been around for a long time because I, I I actually used this in the interim when we didn't have cable or an antenna. Mm-hmm. Um, the weird thing is is yeah the broadcast TV there's very right. few. It's like I, I, at that point in time, it was like ABC and NBC out oh, of. Okay, I love this. You can actually see the desktop. Did you see that? Yeah. For a moment there, you can actually see the <laughs> desktop they're broadcasting from. So th- this is yeah, this isn't gonna last. And my guess is they're not. They're just not big enough that that they're getting noticed. They're getting attacked yet. Yeah. Well, like, they were on. They were on a major uh, blog probably years ago, and it was the question of when they were gonna get taken down. Yeah. So it's been around for quite some time. This, even some of this, like like they're 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 re- obviously rebroadcasting broadcast TV, which that's what Ario's talking about. And Ario's taking another thing. We're saying, hey, you each have an antenna, so right. you own that that's screen. That's the difference. That, like that's the technology loophole. But I don't think they're even bothering with this this version of it. Uh, it, it feels like they might be just jacking right into cable and and, and going from there. Um, Rio's also invested a lot in legal, and their investors have invested in them enough that they'll be able to fight the battle, and they'll probably win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know about these guys. Yeah, but... I don't think so. They definitely can't win these guys. That's what's so weird about it. It's like, why even do it? You know? Yeah. Unless unless they're in some unless they're rebroad they're sending stuff from some kind of decentralized location over to another country, like where Pirate Bay <laughs> operates out of, and then rebroadcasting from that location. <laughs> And then you're there. There's no financial gain for them because you're not going to be able to pay for it. But, but uh, the least lucrative, yeah. <laughs> most complicated scenario ever. Exactly. They just hate cable. So they offshore just hate cable. <laughs> By the way, I, I have to point out the uh, the awesome uh, images that you've included in our doc here. Um, I wanted to spice things up. I, I, I like this. I, I like it. this. Um, I think that guy's watching film on. Yeah, you might be. There's some some great pictures in there. Yeah, usually usually my crew is is uh, just making uh, ASCII penises all night. So uh, I, I'm like lappy I'm, dongs, lappy dongs. I'm sure that's going to happen during yep. the mayhem show here tonight. Um, I'm going to go home like I'm, I'm after we're done here. I'm going to go build flappy dongs. <laughs> it's going to happen one way or another. Awesome. Um, they get both of you. No, uh, uh, Neil. What's your, what's your awesome thing? So I actually originally wanted to talk about Flappy Bird too, but I think we slapped that topic out. So, uh, I think something else that I want to talk about that I'm actually spending a lot of time with is uh, 
Um, so I have like a normal day job and it's awesome and I love it. And then I get home and then I code till like six in the morning. No um, way, every day. Well, I was up like Friday night till eight in the morning. So, so whatever. One this day. is like this I'm is like a thing that I've been doing, yeah. and it's not because like it takes me forever to do stuff. It's just kind of what I like to do. But um, I've been building a lot of like web apps and cool stuff recently. But I couldn't do a lot of what I've been doing without. Um, uh, one of these like uh, cloud platforms where I push all my code up to, um, and one of them that I've been using is called um, OpenShift from Red Hat, and it's awesome. So if you've ever, if you're a Ruby on Rails programmer, you're probably using Heroku to push up your apps, uh, which is a, a platform that was bought kind of by Salesforce a few years ago. But um, Red Hat, who uh, distributes a particular distribution of Linux, um, they have this platform called OpenShift where I can write all my code and then I can essentially just uh, deploy it to OpenShift and they'll host the code for me. So I don't have to maintain my own server. I know it'll never go down. It's got tons of storage. It can scale when um, I get a lot of people coming to the site. And it's really cool. And so I can just sort of plug in all the little blocks I need, write my code, get a, get a database server running if I need to, run a web server. It is super awesome stuff. And if you know, you're a developer and you're just running some little hobby projects, uh, it's a great place to host it, and it's just been so much fun to play with for the plat uh, for like the past few weeks. Is this um? I, I'm only have a little bit of knowledge on, on this side. Is this like a, a GitHub kind of situation here? So right, so GitHub is where you would host your code, or you'd have people sort of collaborate on it with you. But that's okay. just like static code. You can't really run it from there. Um, okay. What you do is you then sort of push that same uh, repo, which is what they call it on GitHub. You'd actually push that up to. Um, to OpenShift, and then they would actually sort of allow you to actually execute and run the code. So this is for the actual kind of I'm launching this this piece of software online to work online kind of kind of situation. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Awesome. So that's uh, OpenShift.com if you guys want to check that out. Do you have a link to any of the stuff you're you've done or worked on? Uh, yeah, you know, so one of the things I'm working on right now is called um, Scrolla. Uh, the URL right now is actually dev dev dot S K R O L dot L A. Uh, so like, and uh, what it is, it's actually a small web app so that you can um, sort of scroll web pages on your phone just using your accelerometer. So you tilt it to you and away from you, and it scrolls up and down. So, you know, I could host that on my own, but with OpenShift, I could write all the code at home, push it up, and then test it on my phone. It's crazy awesome. awesome. Is this? Uh, I don't know if you can see the monitor behind me. Is this, this is your site here? Yeah, it, it'll. It'll only really function on your phone, so I, uh, I highly recommend trying it out. Um, but yeah, it's cool. It's in development. Just uh, trying to make it work a little better now, but uh, it is functional. <laughs> awesome. Uh, we'll be sure to uh, include that in show notes so everybody can check it out. Great. So, awesome. And I think I'm last here. Uh, you know, I we I feel like we've done a story on this uh, uh, ages ago when it first came out. Uh, something called Hit Bliss. Um, this was... Basically, you download this software, you watch commercials, they give you credit, and you can cash that in for watching movies, TV shows. Actually, now they've added you can uh, uh, pay for a part of your uh, Pandora One subscription on it. Um, I've been sitting on this for a little bit because initially when uh, I was granted the access to this, because I think it might even still be in beta, um, the movies they have on there were—it was a pretty good selection, uh, but you had to watch it in the app on your computer. And I'm not typically like—I I like pushing stuff to my big TV if I'm going to watch. I don't know at the time it was like Django Unchained or something like that, right? Or Lone mm -hmm. Ranger or something. Um, so recently, they've actually included uh, the ability to rent Amazon stuff on here. So mm -hmm. I went and you—you—you you, you go through, you watch commercials. It'll actually uh, have you, hey, click a mouse or hit enter every so often to make sure you're there. And make sure you're not just like letting us run and racking up your, your, your fees and everything. And the commercials are pretty, pretty repetitive. I don't know how many Liberty Mutual and, and the Hangover 3 commercials I've seen and Geico commercials. And, and you're going to see them. Like Madden 25 is still in the rotation. Uh, but it works. And last week, I uh, got to watch a brand new Justice League War. We talked about it on the Movie Minute uh, recording earlier tonight. Go check that out. Um, and I got to see, finally, Pacific Rim off of this. And, and, and in, in both cases, I just pulled up my laptop, pulled up the application, um, went ahead, rented the movie, and then I went to my Xbox <coughs> that has the uh, Amazon uh, 
on demand on it and pulled up the thing full HD and watched the movie. Uh, so I was able to check out some newer movies without having to really go pay for it. And, you know, it's kind of, I've kind of worked up a system that I can put it on, like on the side while I'm working at my desk. So, you know, I, I, and it limits you at $6 at a time. So you don't rack up like 20 bucks or something like that and, and, and you know, just have that stored in there. Uh, so it's, it's hitbliss.com. And uh, it, I again, I don't know how long this is going to be around. Uh, the fact that they haven't updated commercials in forever is probably not a good sign. Uh, so, but in the meantime, it, it's, it's a good way to, for you to legally, it seems, uh, uh, catch some uh, newer movies, TV, pay for a month of Pandora 1, whatever you want to do with it. So go check that out. So you can earn you can earn six bucks at a time. Yep. And watching advertisements is it just like it'll just you sit there and say I'm going to go earn and it's going to play advertisements. It's going to give you a link so you can save the 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 advertisement or something. Go to the website. Um, so it gives you some like kind of points of contact there. What you sit there and just continually like, like stream advertisements, or do you have to click something in between them? randomly like in the middle and in between commercials there'll just be a thing that pops at the bottom and, and it counts down and it'll knock you down to level one because if you go up in levels it will prompt you less to make sure you're still there because there's a trust level they call it you okay. trust that you're actually watching these so as you go that'll build up uh somebody somebody else was saying something there was that you neil oh yeah i, I was i mean no I, but what the I'm sorry, I, I can't speak English. Um, I was going to say, you know what? This is a great opportunity to do: teach your child to pay attention to something and to get them to do something for you. So, if you have children, this sounds like a great opportunity <laughs> to shut them up, right? See, like, I, I think press this the is, button and earn me six bucks. See, that I think this is this is a great widget for Neil to create, where it can read the screen and figure out where that button that now you have you to see, click is. No, 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 no. Now, now they thought about this because I was sitting there and I'm like, oh, I want to watch this movie. Oh, I, I'm only at like two fifty. I need to get a couple more bucks so I can go around Pacific Rim. So I actually went into Log Me In, which is going to go away here soon because it's becoming you're getting rid of the free version. Team Viewer. But I, I'm. I'm trying to look into that because I need a replacement really bad. Um, I logged did he, in. Did you just say Team Beaver? <laughs> <laughs> On his glass. Aww. No, Team Team Viewer. Oh, okay. Sorry, I have a cold. <laughs> On his glass or in his glass? <laughs> team Beaver in his glass. <laughs> wow. Um, where the hell was I? Oh, no, I was in LogMeIn. So it says, like, I, well, one I put up a, on a laptop, and I'm like, oh, I'll just hit, hit this while we're watching this thing. And it says, uh, you need to turn your audio up. So you can't just mute it and sit there. And you mm -hmm. also can't um, have something else controlling your mouse. Log me in, team viewer, or something like that. Okay. So they're, they've already worked around Figured out some what way to... people would be screwing around with this thing to earn stuff easier. So, because you, I mean, any kind of remote software, like it would most likely detect something automated that's controlling the mouse. But there's an Android app. And I can put an Android VM on my Windows or Mac machine that That's I can true. then control from my mouse, but it registers a tap. There you go. Mm -hmm. There's, yeah, there's a way. So <laughs> there's always a way. Right, like, we are not going to do this like, the right way. Like, you will find a way to The amount of effort you put into this. <laughs> but if you're just looking for a, 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 a location on a screen to click, and you're you then have... Unlimited movie runners. I, I love I don't that. Know. I love that. It. Immediately, we're trying to hack this thing, and that's why it's probably not going to do too well in in the long run. So, so, so again, was, that means uh, enjoy it there now. There was something like this back in the day for phone calls, where if you would listen to a couple ads on the phone, you got to make phone calls, and the more ads you listen to, the more call time you got. But the thing is, they can't ask you. Like, like this was like back in like the mid nineties. Like, no one thought to ask, "Are you still listening?" Say yes or no, Just, and yeah. as a result. All you have to do is just hold the phone in one hand, watch TV, and then like 30 minutes later, be like, all right, I'm ready to make a call. You know, there was a actually... there was an app like this for the computer that was a toolbar, and yeah. the toolbar would uh, would play ads. Yeah. And as long as you were using your computer and the toolbar was scrolling, you were good. But you had to have mouse movement. Yeah, what, so what, what did in you, college, what, what did we you get figured out, you got money you in got a mon check. Oh, I remember those. Monthly. I think I might have got one of those. So. <laughs> Now, they ended up limiting you to, and it was a pyramid scheme, too. So if you could get people to sign what up under <laughs> you and do it, like, you got a small percentage of what they made as well. Mm -hmm. So we actually figured out and had a slew of computers running this under 
sub accounts and sub accounts for email addresses. And so we found a program that would move your mouse and click. And then we figured we got into some trouble where like it would click on something and it would, it would like click start shutdown and the computer would shut off for the day. So then we figured if we ran Netscape Navigator in full screen mode with no bars around it and this thing at the bottom, you could pretty much get it going almost 24 hours a day. So someone's going to figure out some way around this. The, the, <laughs> the key being, I think, what you were saying is what, you're limited to six bucks in your account or whatever. Yeah, I think that was That's going to be... Maybe like if you first started, you <coughs> limited to six bucks. Um, this, this reminded me of, just talking about, just talking about this, so I'll turn my mic up. Um, there was a computer that you would get. You got the computer for free, and it served ads around the entire perimeter of your screen. Wasn't it the original e-machine? Oh, that sounds terrible. It might have been the original e-machine, actually. I think it was the original was. e-machine before Gateway bought them. Yeah. <laughs> that could be. That, could, that, that, that probably is. But then you just format the hard drive, reinstall Windows, and... I mean, there has to be something where you sign a contract saying, I'm not going to mess with this hardware. But if immediately I'm looking at the thing and looking at the specs like, what can I do with this thing? You know, what, what, how do I get around that? And is it worth it? You know, because I think like we were really, really needed a computer at that point. Um, so, I mean, it was like late 90s. So we were looking at something that could, you know, get on the blazing 28K uh, super information highway. So... For porn. What's that? For porn. For porn, I was I, yeah, I wasn't. Baby! <laughs> I mean, you like you can say to use Microsoft Project or Word or like write a document, but I know what what you mean is porn. Like that's cool. I was sixteen. Yes. Yeah. Porn. Yes, most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, we uh, I received an email from uh, uh, Chachi here. Uh, his dog got in, on the Google Street View today. Or not today. Well, he discovered it today. Uh, That's awesome. So he's a superstar. I, I told him. We had a little discussion with him on um, on a, a, a G Chat today, and uh, I was like, you know, in Germany, you could probably sue for his likeness being on there. Well, that's why in, in a lot of lo I mean, in every location, you'll see if if you go to the north side in Pittsburgh, usually they have people out there with signs, and like it's a big day when the Google car drives by, but mm -hmm. then they blur out everyone's faces. So it's like they didn't used me. to. They didn't used to. No, mm -mm. they didn't. It's because someone sued. It's like you can't. You know, show faces, and if you, if you look at billboard ads on Street View now, they've blurred out the faces, right? The Calvin Klein ads in New York, and well, any other ad. Well, they're, they're probably that one just comes to mind. It's probably some kind of algorithm, right? Yep. I got, I got Facial think. recognition. Yeah, you know, they got it. <laughs> they they have your face, and they have a picture of it, and they yeah. they can do facial recognition. They just can't show it to anyone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, or uh, the mattress factory there on the north side when they had the uh, the marching band down the mm -hmm. down the. Alley and everything. I love those little Easter eggs. So awesome. So uh, let's get to some more stories for the week. Um, I have been taking a look at the Amazon Studios uh, pilot season, take two. Uh, this is something they did, uh, I think, late last year. That's where they did like the Zombie Land uh, pilot. The betas and Alpha House came out of this, and they're currently going mm -hmm. on. Um, they got something from Chris Carter, who did the X Files, called the After. I had the opportunity to check out uh, Mozart in the Jungle, which was way better than I expected it to be. Um, it was just kind of like a half-hour comedy-ish show. Uh, the Rebels, which was uh, uh, this uh, 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 wife that was a cheerleader, uh, the owner of the uh, Los Angeles football team, dies, and she takes it over. So, so it's a really good. Uh, and there's a monkey that shoots a gun. So we were looking for the monkey that shoots the gun from the trailer. Because oh, okay. it didn't it didn't tell you what all the scenes that you wanted to see were actually from in the shows. So it was kinda hard we were kinda trying to play play a game and narrow that down. Um, so again, like the first one, Alpha House seems like it's doing well. We actually started watching betas over the weekend, um, which has been uh, really fun. Uh, betas is like a Silicon Valley kind of show, um, not to be confused with Silicon Valley that's gonna be coming up on HBO by Mike Judge. Not the original. Which is, which is uh, Pirates supposed to be Silicon better, Valley. actually. What's that? Supposed to be better. I actually watched both of those shows, and um, I thought that Alpha House was really good. I thought that Betas, since I work in tech, was uh, kind of annoyingly like too on the nose in some places. Like they were trying too hard. <laughs> it really seems they're they're serving like the people like us that work in tech, isn't it? Like I don't. They're trying I, to. I don't right? feel like. They'll, they'll, 
they'll say stuff like glass hole and they'll talk about uber and it's yeah. like that's great guys but like it's, this is not how the world works it's not accessible at all to general people i don't think and i think that's why it's where it is so i, I mean it feels like a web series with a like way better production value in the long run. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's got a decent cast, right? They got uh, Ed Bagley Jr., they got mm -hmm. um, John Daly. Oh, yeah. Right, like, yeah, I mean, like, it's funny, but it's not realistic at all. No, no. Um, but then again, I believe, like, how was the internship, right? That was, a, I mean, the, the whole movie just never needed to be made. <laughs> exactly. I mean, did, did, did anybody see that here? Nobody I, saw that, right? I haven't yet. I want to earmark it to check it out for free because, God, I'm not paying for that. I just want to see what <laughs> they did with it. Um, so I'm going to get my, my hipless monkey. On. Um, I mean, like, I've, I've been to that campus because um, my uh, brother works at Google in Seattle, and, like, I visited the Mountain View campus. I worked down the street from the New York office. Like, yeah, it's kind of like a huge shit show, but, like, it's not that bad like things aren't just like crazy pants insane everywhere mm -hmm. like or if they are they've been like that in every tech company forever mm -hmm. like yahoo and microsoft and hp all have like crazy shit like that right so um as far as amazon studios what do you guys think about it? one has anybody else the, the ufc uh uh deal has uh does anybody else check out any of these is, is this i feel like this is something that's not on the radar of people that aren't already on like amazon prime watching their videos on amazon like is is that i, I take it you guys aren't that's so i'm a prime member i have access okay mm -hmm. i'm a netflix subscriber okay i i have never felt compelled and I have on all my devices the stuff that's hooked up to the TV. I have Amazon Prime access on the on the TiVo on everything. Mm. There is something that I do not feel compelled to click on Amazon. Well, like they're on demand. It's, it's Whereas a, Netflix, it's an easy. You know uh, what you're getting. You know mm -hmm. what you're getting. Yeah, their interface isn't as good. I, I look at it on the Xbox. It's very clunky, especially mm -hmm. for multiple seasons of episodes. Like, yes. you shouldn't have to click on five different things of Justified just to, like, access all of Justified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But for me, it's they have content. Like, there's a ton of crossover. You see a movie that was like, oh, I can't believe that movie's on there. Like, that's a newer-ish movie, like Red Dawn or... or Cruise or something it's probably on the other one too that's mm -hmm. the, like that's the other thing the avengers is always on both of them hunger mm -hmm. games is always on like they're sharing these deals in some way i don't know how that's working out but there's like stuff like my wife got to watch a couple of seasons of covert affairs and get caught up a little bit um is that not on netflix it's not on netflix oh. um there is uh i just started watching they just put all the uh batman the animated series uh superman on there like the the the, the wb stuff that hasn't been on enough netflix yet because they've of course had justice league and everything um yeah. but again yeah it's really clunky to do that i, I agree with that completely um but they so i don't know i'm already kind of keeping an eye on on, on this because i, I want i think it's an interesting process too as opposed to netflix way of doing it we have house of cars coming out this week uh valentine's day so you yep. can watch political thrillers with your loved one i guess um <laughs> When does um, Orange is the New Black come back? Not soon enough, because okay. that show was amazing. Not for a while. I mean, it just wrapped. Yeah. No. Oh, wait. It just wrapped. Like, the filming of season two just wrapped. No, I mean, like, just like the airing was, what, like a couple months ago. Um, interestingly yeah. enough, about Orange is the New Black, one of the writers from that show is a Pittsburgh native, Lauren Morelli. The, the good... Uh... Really? Yeah, she went to Winchester Thurston when I lived in Pittsburgh. Nice. Nice. Yes, I was really mean to her too. And <laughs> she's uh, doing pretty well for herself. <laughs> awesome. Um, but I mean, and we're getting the stories that uh, House of Cards is already getting signed up for a third season. Versus, uh, well, Amazon had, I don't even know how many pilots in that first thing, and all we got was Alpha House and Betas out of it, which is good because that really bad um, 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 blogging musical did not need to happen. Like, it was like a, not a valley wag, but like, like it was like a uh, um, um, like a, a Boing Boing or something uh, company, and they were like interns, and they were competing for the job. But it was crossed with Glee somehow. And Perfect. 
did not work out. Ch Chachi and I sat down and watched it, and we're just like, this this should not get made. <laughs> but it's very democratic. They're 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 taking feedback. They're they're looking at reviews, and that's what they're they're having to decide gets gets made. And not only these, there's of course uh, kids shows on there as well. But again, I, I don't know who's. I, I can't see a lot of people really interfacing with this a lot, um, other than the fact that everybody's buying everything their toilet paper on Amazon and then might be just coming across it. <coughs> I guess there's a lot of Kindle, Kindle fires and stuff out there too people are watching off, right? Mm -hmm. So You know, everybody I know has Amazon Prime and most of them who have it stream it. Mm -hmm. So I think it might just depend on it, your individual social circle. I don't know. And your habits. Your habits. Yeah, yeah. totally. I mean, I we got it on a whim and then I was like, hey, this is pretty sweet because it's got all these TV shows you're not going to find on Netflix. Like, I love Chopped. It's got a ton of that. You know, you're not really going to find that, not even really on the web. They don't have it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, All of us are moving around so much in the background. I'm trying to eat. Hey, I was wondering, you're, you're, <laughs> well, I, well, I like you're talking and moving, you're talking and moving. I feel like I feel like your webcam's like, like in on an Aaron Sorkin show. I'm, I'm doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> Just keeping up. That's, That's the, uh, it's the podcast Verite style. That's how we do it. Reality. Okay. It's like you're here with us. editing. <laughs> I'm wearing my house blouse, trying to get comfy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you're missing something if you're not on video here, guys. Um, Chilla, you had uh, what's going on with Virgin Atlantic? You're they so, they they got they got some of these guys, some Google so the, Glass going they're on. They're right? doing they're doing some stuff with Glass, and it impressed me because the article talks about they're actually using it to greet their first class customers by name. Now, it doesn't go into any detail on how they're doing that, and it's only a test that's going to last six weeks. And it, it's some interface between Google Glass and Sony Smartwatch. Get used to this image on your screen, <coughs> folks. So, it's, so they're obviously, are, where are they getting a feed of, of facial recognition from? Are they are they tapping or I mean are they tapping airline information to then get passport photos? How's this working? It's all from TSA. Probably social media, right? Like if you're a first class passenger and they can figure it out. Is that a drill? <laughs> I thought someone was like squeezing a balloon. <laughs> well, no, he's stepped away. He, Nick stepped away, so I don't know. But I'm still here. I just needed some water, okay? Oh, he was running water. <laughs> um but uh, yeah, who knows where they're getting the data from? How accurate it's going to be? It it will be interesting if if they do this, if they're allowed to do this. And this is coming out of Heathrow Airport, so it's not going to be in the United States. Mm -hmm. But when is it going to get to the point where you walk into McDonald's and they're like, "Hi, John." Blah 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 blah. blah. That's what. Well, do you want your normal Big Mac today? Do I you mean, want your twenty McNuggets? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's going to get creepy. I definitely don't want anybody at McDonald's recognizing who I am. <laughs> and yeah, as it is, like if they recognize you, if you go to McDonald's, you're going to McDonald's too often. Well, you know which company's right. going to do yeah. this first? It'd be Starbucks. If any yeah. company would get on this, it'd be Starbucks. I can see Starbucks doing it. But I'd that... be like, oh, that guy wants a really shitty latte. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be interesting because, I mean, Google with all their analytics and all their data, and Google Now and a bunch of other technologies along with glass could really on the opposite side through facial recognition it knows who you are and then that employee knows what you're there for mm -hmm. based on prior orders and experience oh it's 9 a.m john's at this starbucks he's gonna get a grande coffee but if he's here between two and three he's usually getting a mocha and if it's a weekend, he's probably picking up this. Like, they could really take it to the next that's, level. That's that's mm -hmm. something like like we, we kind of think. I think we kind of think about with Google now, like that kind of scary predictive technology. You're like, well, they're serving stuff to you. They're not really selling, sharing that. But really, what keeps them from saying, "I'm going to sell your Google Now data to McDonald's, you know, Starbucks, mm -hmm. airlines, whatever." I, the only happen. thing that prevents them from doing that is that really thin promise that they won't be evil, which is. The biggest load of horse shit ever. But, is, mm -hmm. but to some people, is that evil? Because if I could walk up to Starbucks in the afternoon and not have to give my order yeah, and touch something just to pay, 
-hmm. If it's convenient, and, and that's, that's been the thing the whole, the whole time. If it's convenient, yeah, go ahead and take my stuff. You know, go ahead and take all the like, accidental winks and awkward situations on this thing to the Google Plus <laughs> because I I completely trust you. Whatever, it's convenient, right? But the mm -hmm. glass is going to be on the other face in this in this mm -hmm. thing. Oh, where... the shoes on the other foot. I see what you did there. What if but, the glass is communicated? But, I mean, it's going to be, you're no longer going to be the one with glass looking out at the world. Glass is going to be looking back at you. It's going to become self-aware. This is way too <laughs> introspective for the story. It ha it's, no way. Uh, well, somebody else looking at uh, Google Glass is uh, the NYPD. They got a few mm -hmm. on here. And it's kind of funny. Two. What's that? They got two. Yeah, they got a whole two. <laughs> so I don't know what they're going to do with those two. Because, I mean, CMU got like ten. So... I, I, I don't know. But but checking out the story, it is kind of funny because they talk about uh, one part. They talk about firefighters being able to tell what buildings are what, be able to speak and, and get directions and addresses and stuff. Because I, I told I think I told the story on here uh, the day that I got these up in New York. We were at the TGI Fridays. There was a flood and the firefighters came in, but they weren't there for the flood. They were for some fire. <laughs> but they were in the wrong building, mm -hmm. so I'm like, maybe they do need something like this in New York. Wait, City. wait, you didn't tell me a firefighter can't tell if a building's on fire. <laughs> I don't know. It's in Times Square. I the, think the... that might be part of the job description in the test. That's like, can't, these are two buildings. Do you know which one's on fire? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was. I met him at the door, and and, and like as we were eating dinner at, the, at this is a TGI Fridays near Times Square, and it started flooding from like the the floor above or something, right? Like like right by where we were sitting, and we're like, okay, let's let's get out of here. We'll go do some other stuff, right? And then we run into the firefighters at the door, and we're like, are you here for the flood? And they're like, no, we're here for a fire. Is this the right place? Well, was the was flood like, was the flood yeah, caused but, by a water sprinkler system? I don't yeah, know. Exactly. It was just coming through the ceiling, so so it was weird. <laughs> it was weird. Um. So so maybe it'll help those kinds of situations. I mean, I can understand. It's so massive in New York City. I mean. Especially in Manhattan, to be able to find the right location, you know. <coughs> I don't know. It's going to get out there. I, I mean, we will already see. There's the ASCII. Wow, that is an impressive. I want to show this. Wait, I can't wait to see this. I, I, I can't show that on this show. Um, but I'll show, I'll show is it. Is it a there. DM? No, no, no. It's, it's Yes, it's, that go, is go refresh your document. It's veiny and everything. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Wow, that is wow. that is not a flappy dong shit. That is not a flappy dong at all. There's some. That's only the best for the awesome cast. <laughs> Man, who spent time making this? Is what I want to know. Is this what you've been doing the whole time? Is that what all those noises were? <laughs> Do you have some kind of a picture to ask a converter? <laughs> this should be a really good picture to ask a converter. <laughs> oh my god! On that note. Um, guys, <laughs> from Nick and Neil from the Audio Shocker, I see you might want to plug something here. I do have a plug I want to do, if that's okay. That is fine. That's what completely here to do that stuff. <laughs> Mike, I know you're a wrestling guy. I and, am. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I'm really not. I know pretty much nothing about wrestling. But uh, oh, my collaborator I, Sean I, I, Atkins. I went to a wrestling uh, match back from Mexico. Two. What's it? Yeah, I know, but that's all I know about wrestling. That's the extent of my wrestling knowledge of those masks. Okay. But uh, next week on Super Haters, one of my webcomics, we've got a new wrestling story arc. I'm not going to say that we did a lot of research, but I'm going to say that it's fun. And there's a trailer that's out now. If people want to hit it up, they can just go to superhaters.com. And there's the trailer playing in the background. As you can see, my video skills are really just out of control. I am the master of slideshows. <laughs> <laughs> Broken <laughs> Buzzfeed. But uh, Sean's a fantastic artist and uh, a a Pittsburgh PodCamp attendee. Or is it PodCamp Pittsburgh? I get a little mixed up on that. PodCamp Pittsburgh, yeah. I, yeah, I think it was PodCamp Pittsburgh. Yeah. Anyway, point is, it's going to be fun, and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to plug it. It's, uh, it's going to be a six-page story. It starts on Monday. It'll run through Saturday. Awesome. Uh, Neil, you have anything to plug? Um, No. I mean, I, I probably should, but I don't. I, I already told you about my software, so... But, but you know what? If you want to follow me on GitHub and see what I'm building and what's open source, Neil RS at GitHub or on GitHub. Why not? Awesome. In GitHub. In GitHub. <laughs> I'm all up in that hub. <laughs> and of course, check out all their shows and their entire network over there, audioshocker.com. They got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, great crew over there. Um, Chilla, you, what's coming up this week? What's coming up this week? Xbox One was supposed to have an update today. Mm. It's been it's delayed. Oh, no. 
till sometime else this week. They haven't said said why. Um, that's going to bring a lot of things to the Xbox. You're going to see another Xbox update next month and prepare for something from Apple is, real uh, soon. Is, is this update or the next supposed to have Twitch TV? They have not said. It's not going to be this one. They didn't say it was going to okay. be this one. But they also, because they didn't release today, they uh, threw a bunch of hardware and peripheral accessory updates people's way. So that'll be coming next month as well. Woo. Windows getting major updates. Windows Phone on the verge of getting ma major updates. And I'm guessing Apple, right around that same time in March, is going to have also upcoming announcements. I haven't heard anything in the Googleverse. So it'll be interesting to see. Usually this is the time of year where Microsoft and Apple go at it. Yeah. And, some, and Samsung will be throwing in some of their stuff because the World Mobile Conference will be coming up. Yeah. But I haven't heard any rumblings out of the Google worlds. So I don't know. Hmm. Gutters. Hmm. Sneaky, sneaky. Hmm. Hi. You guys, uh, doing anything? <laughs> Alex? You She's any, sitting there. Did they finally get you on a Scarehouse podcast that we kept you from a few weeks ago? Not yet. No, not yet. No, they probably don't like me anymore. No. You're going to ruin it for me, guys. We win. <laughs> I don't know. We mentioned that on the show. Like, what was it last week or the week before? I was. We were like, uh, 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 I can't remember her name over at Scarehouse. Margie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I saw this tweet saying, saying, oh, no, I'm booked for, for when we had you on Mayhem Show, yeah. too. And I was like, oh, and we're like, oh, did we just start a podcast to work? Uh, uh, so. <laughs> it was like four hours of just me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly was... would the podcast were equivalent of, like, the Warriors be? Like, I don't even know like, what that would look like. Denial of service tax on websites and I don't know. How could you podcast war? <laughs> Sounds very uh, philosophical. <laughs> How do you podcast war? How is your Google Glass going to be looking back at you? Many ASCII attacks. <laughs> there you go. Just of floppy dogs. Fla <laughs> floppy dogs are aware. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, check out the great uh, Scarehouse podcast, uh, scarehouse.com for the site, which, you know, they, they do more. Oh, you know, it's this weekend. Huh? Valentine's Day in the basement. It's, another, it's a Valentine's theme in the basement. <laughs> oh, oh that's going there. The basement oh, it, it is. is part of the haunted house, guys. It's it's a it's an over eighteen didn't attraction. They do, didn't they do a Christmas version? Yes, too? and it went very well. I got I, I tell you, I got the walkthrough, the verbal walkthrough of the basement. I was from somebody on a car trip to Cleveland from one from one of my wrestler friends. That's awesome. That no. was I, I got the entire like so this happened and then this happened and then my friend got thrown in a closet and there was a guy without his underwear. I don't want to spoil anything, but oh, it's totally different. You yeah, I'm sure by now they're, they're completely doing new stuff. Underwear touching. I, there's all kinds of stuff. I love Handcuffs. that they're growing the haunted house like the rest of the year like this. This yeah. is this is. Tremendous. Mm -hmm. I was bummed because I couldn't go in the basement because it was completely booked. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize like you needed a different reservation for yeah. that. Yeah, it, it was a new concept. It sounds like they did, they did amazing with it this oh, year. Yeah. So uh, really, ha really happy to see them doing good over there at the Scarehouse. You know, Scott, of course, has been on the show before mm -hmm. uh, talking about that. Uh, and they really keep things going all year long. I see stuff popping up on YouTube and the podcast all year. It's, it's it's look great. for a lot, a lot of good stuff coming this year, especially mm -hmm. social media wise and video wise. It's, it's a lot of good stuff. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> no floppy donks. No floppy donks. <laughs> no, no floppy no, donks. I don't know. May, I don't know. The basement is over 18, so you never know. Um, with that, guys, <laughs> thanks a lot. Of course, you can check us out. We are looking for my notes good yeah we're on awesomecast.com we're going to be flushing that out here over the next few weeks uh please i uh, the products and stuff will have linked up there with the amazon links if you want to support the show um sorgatronmedia.com for all the rest of uh what we're doing over here uh we're recording live every tuesday at uh 6 30 p.m eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com you can jump in that chat room and uh and, and have some fun with us um Twitter at AwesomeCast, uh, as well as Facebook, Google+, uh, available on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, and Spreaker. Uh, thanks again to great uh, Michael Allen. I saw him tweeting here, uh, helping us with the show notes and everything uh, here on the show and uh, throughout the night here on, on podcast day. 
uh, as well. So thank you. And I, we did not mention, by the way, I was just looking at my chat. That's why I paused there. I did. We did not mention, go ch check out the daywefightback.org. I actually got links in a big pop-up over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com because I couldn't find the HTML on the rest of my WordPress sites. Um, so that was a thing. Uh, a really good cause um, to make sure they don't screw up the internet. We won't get into that because we're out of time. Uh, but go <laughs> definitely check that out. <laughs> and we'll see you guys. Thanks a lot. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Uh, thanks to our awesome chat room. Have an awesome week. Or fixed in post. <laughs> on his glass. Would you feel better if I put it on? <laughs> pull, pull him down in his glass. <laughs> <laughs> feel better if this happens, and yeah. then Riz can send me yes. ASCII penises on Twitter. I don't want to send. I'm not going to do that. I just like to see you in your no, glass. No, no, but Riz will. You like He'll send you floppy dongs. I guess. I want to do that. How do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a version of the game that says dicks? <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the new game. The I'm sure there's a dick version. There is definitely a dick version. <laughs> you just wink at them and explode. Wait, we, I thought we were talking about flappy birds. Flappy dongs. Yeah, flappy dongs. Somebody has a flappy dong so There. Okay. That'd be our new app. Well, know. Flappy dong app. Flappy dong. Three, guys. two. All right. Three, two. Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, we're overcoming our Flappy Birds addictions and wondered why we had one in the first place uh, with... Uh, I envisioned the ASCII art in my head and it screwed me up. Uh, three, two... Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, we're overcoming our... I almost said Flappy Dongs. You gotta put all these at the end. Oh, I, I do have to. I, I really do need to do that. Three, two. Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, we're talking about our Flappy Birds addiction. Why they we had one in the first place and distracting ourselves with uh, Chilla's doodads and some wonderful ASCII art as we're joined by the fellows from AudioShocker.com. Awesome Cast.